This is The Party with Serene and Pearl. Get it right, P-O-D-D-Y. What up, pod fam? It's us and you again. Hey, you know what? I always come in and I'm like, hey, girls, what are we talking about today? Yeah. And as usual, they don't tell me. No. And so I can tee up nothing. Right. Pearl even told me to come brain dead today. I said, I will inform you when I'm good and ready what we're talking about today. And then you guys will just bring the conversation around it. I love it. I have a really good subject. Launch it. Because I have been asked so frequently lately, what do I think of the glucose goddess? And she had a book out, this one that I grabbed because I- It's a good cover. um, Yeah. She's the glucose goddess? She's the glucose goddess. Um. Actually, Look I've got a lot of great things to say I hope about she's into what glucose. She's, um, kind of. She's like a blonde Joan she, Jett. She is French. Is Joan Jett blonde? I don't know who Joan Jett is. I have no clue who Joan no, Jett is. No, she's a black hair, right? Yeah. But he knows who Heidi is. He told me I look like Heidi today. Heidi who? Heidi, like Heidi of the hills of Switzerland. You made her the say Heidi. The little girl, who. Heidi from the book. No, just her outfit looks like oh, she's and like. I walked in. I had my little skirts. She's going to lead like yeah, a bunch of orphans. Yeah, this is a Heidi skirt. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, so. I'm going to kind of get into what I think, and you guys are going to help me. This is her This is her second book, I think. The first one was called The Glucose Goddess Revolution, maybe. This is a method. This is where she gives some recipes. Recipes are really quite nice. I like them. But basically, I've been asked so, so many messages. You're going to be nice. And so many tags. I'm going to be nice. Okay, good. Because um, that's the Christian way. No, I'm going to be nice because there's a lot of things to be oh, nice about. Good. There's a couple of things I don't agree with, mm-hmm. but, you know, we can strike those off. I feel like we can learn from everybody. <gasps> what the heck? I mean, there's a couple of books that I haven't learned much from. Yeah. The one, I can learn from any health book, like, because yeah. you always get nuggets of truth. And they've people spend a long time Even writing books. Even that nugget of truth is don't be like them. It makes you think. <laughs> okay, so – as an author, I can appreciate the time that goes into any yeah. book and no one really knows what's involved in a book, right? <laughs> it's complete torture. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I mean, like, so I appreciate that she put this information in here and some yeah. of it I really like. Yeah. Um, but because you guys keep asking me about it, um, our listeners, I'm going to tell you my thoughts, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, and I'm going to start with the good. Um because so many people say, um, Pearl, have you seen the glucose goddess? Do you agree with what she says? I would have to say that I agree with a lot of it and some I don't, but that's okay. So here are her principles and I'm going to go through each one and you guys can help me okay. and say, you know, what we think. Is there merit in that? Should we be doing that? I haven't that? drank coffee. I'm going to be very nice. Okay, good. Yeah. Just be very gentle. So this is, um, and this is what I want to say. This is a young woman. She's 31. Mm-hmm. She's doing a lot of good. Um, she's got millions of followers. She's, she's got no metabolic she, issues at all in her no, life. No, well, but she did. She's, she's never no, struggled. Wait, no, she has struggled. Nice. <laughs> she has struggled. Oh, okay, she has struggled. Okay, she has struggled. She hasn't. She Her story is that she was just feeling like crap and okay. junk because she was not um, looking after her glucose. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was spiking. So she does when, so when she can sing a good country song. No, there. yes, she, yes, she's <laughs> yeah, got a story. She has had her heartbreak. She was feeling like junk. Yeah, but she's not into yet the hormonal and the metabolic struggles that happen mm-hmm. once you're post thirty five. But actually, once you're post forty. But actually, once you're post forty five. But actually, once you're post fifty. Yeah, that would be very different. Her book's going to be very different by then. Yeah, but that's it is. okay. We all start somewhere. Yeah, Serene, you're when we our first wrote our different. first trim healthy. Mama book. We were a lot more We were more premenopausal women. Mm-hmm. We didn't understand the need for carbs then because yeah. we hadn't lost our hormones. And so we've learned as we've gone, right? And we've learned many things and s- most of it is still there and foundational and it still stands the test of time. But for sure we have tweaked some things. Oh, yeah. So I'm not expecting any person to come out and be perfect straight away. Uh, yeah. So We're not perfect still. Carbs fix hormones? Well, when we lose estrogen, Denny, um, our cortisol hormone goes up. Why? Because estrogen in woman is our biggest stress buster. Mm-hmm. Estrogen carries the stress load that we as women have. What does carbs have to do with that, though? Okay. So yeah. when um, we start losing our estrogen, and people think it just happens in menopause, uh-uh. Mm-hmm. It happens it's, in perimenopause, yes. too. But what happens is it doesn't go down plummeting right at one point it kind of go raises and then falls and then raises and falls but it's all going down like this it kind of if you could see me those of you who are listening it's still going downwards it's like stock market but it's down stock market, yeah. absolutely down 
Yeah. Perfect. Thank that you. That was a great analogy. But again, the carbs. Oh, do- the carbs. Okay. So when when you when you lose your um, estrogen, your cortisol goes up. Why? We've just established cortisol has to deal with the stress. Then it's it's the only one doing the heavy lifting. So cortisol deals with your stress, as does estrogen. Estrogen goes down. Cortisol has to go up because you've still got stress in your life, right? We all face stress. Okay, so how do carbs help? Carbs dampen the cortisol rise in women. So when you pull out carbs, your cortisol goes even higher. So carbs are our easiest and cortisol food puts to burn fat on yeah. your middle. When you when you when your cortisol is high, you can't burn fat, body fat. Okay. So cortisol is your fat storing hormone. Cortisol is a necessary hormone, but we just don't want it elevated all the time. We just needed it that right, that right amount for us. And so carbs, because they are our actual, they they provide us with glucose. They are our easiest fuel to burn, and our body loves they them. They basically tell a person the harvest of the field is in. You don't we actually need, yeah. got a harvest and the sun is shining and we're actually singing Jubilee right now. We're yeah. not in the cave like a bear. So you, so that it's like don't stress. I want to understand that. Yeah, you don't need to stress. Did you not get that analogy? You <laughs> no, didn't get it? No, no I, most people won't get okay, it. Okay, well, what I mean by that is, you know, it's like your body starts to feel the ease of, like, you know, back when, when there was no Kroger's, you know, there was no <laughs> yeah. Wally World. Yeah. It was if that harvest was successful – you know, and you can imagine the sunshine. The whole town came out and it was all banjos and festival and the sheaves of weed are coming in. And, and it's all excitement and celebration. Why? Because we've got the energy for our body, right? And so basically when we eat carbs, we're telling our body, rise and shine, baby cakes. Go get a banjo and burn fat and have a good time because there's nothing to worry about. Right. Okay. When you pull away carbs, your body gets stressed. Why? Carbs is our preferred fuel. Everything slows down. The metabolism slows down. You go into the cave like a bear. Yeah. You hibern- hibernate. Hibernation met- metabolism. I always equated carbs with belly fat. Well, okay. So we're going to get there. Yes. Okay. We're going to get there. We're, yeah. we're talking about okay. two yeah. different carbs. I feel like I'm in kindergarten today. There are carbs and then there are carbs. We've got healthy carbs and we've got junk carbs. And so God junk carbs, carbs and devil carbs. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'm really politically correct. Hey, yeah. You're not allowed to call food bad these days. Yeah. Any food. You just call them devil instead. Can we call yeah. them the Lord's carbs? Yeah. yeah. Yes. The Lord's oh, carbs. Yes. And the, Hallelujah carbs. And, and them Satan and carbs. And Christian carbs. It's, and <laughs> I don't... So... I'm I'm sorry. I know I'm rabbit trailing, but um, I know we've I'm, got so many I'm messages speci- about that lately. I'm specifically interested in yeah. this because I only gain fat in my belly. Yeah, that's a nice band. I didn't know it till I drank like that. Oh, by the <laughs> way, we should say and like we we do have a lot of messages lately about our rabbit trailing. But I'm sorry, we have to say More something power about to the this. rabbit trails. I mean, who else is going to do it? Who's going to do I it? I know, for but them? they do want us to stick to subject on some of our potties. Who said? I thought this was going to be one, but I've got to say, look, <laughs> see this. See behind us, those of you who are not um, watching, but you're listening. Popsies brought it for us. Leslie Pops bought us a lovely backsplash. What do you call it that? Background backdrop. sheet. Backdrop. backdrop. Yeah. The reason is, is because we didn't like the backsplash of the kitchen that was behind no. us. It was so kind this of- is very Leslie flavor it's matching. It's like you dressed for it and today. Yes. And next time we're going to actually, what you call it, get, the, get all the wrinkles out of what it. What happens if I come with like red and something obnoxiously clashing? No, right. te- it's a teal and orange. It's very cinematic vibe. Okay, you I think got it. we yeah. should, yeah, we should accent this. I'm, I'm gonna. Hey, is Danny's that. Danny's like behind him? He needs one too, because right now you've got just like sun coming in. We in don't mind darkly. the plane behind Dan because Dan we need usually, to be accentuated. He, he gets the better lighting. It's like the That's camera true. crew favor him. Yeah, and <laughs> so we need all the help we can get. Yeah, guys, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So where were we? Okay, cortisol. Cortisol. As your hormones drop, your cortisol goes up. Why is that bad? Because cortisol puts um, fat on the tummy and it stops you from burning your own fat. Okay, getting back to this lovely lady called Jessie Inchaposi. And I just wrecked her name. That's probably not the way it's spelled. Inchasp. Inchasp. What does it say? I don't know how to say her name and that's bad. Oh, I no clue. Um, so she is 31. So yet she does not yet have a decline of her hormone estrogen. Mm-hmm. And so the things that she does in here work superbly for her and for many probably other younger women. So it is going to help a lot of younger women. I mean, she talks mostly to women. Mm-hmm. Okay, some men probably. Women. Yeah. Um, 
but now uh, uh, people that are older probably do this too because she's um, influencing many people. And I'm sure if you took anyone coming from a standard diet and they implemented her hacks, they would do better. Yeah. It's definitely a step in the right direction or several steps in the right direction. She's, she's starting to probably, I haven't read the book, but lead people away from the devil carbs, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, so anyone's going to do better. she is leading people towards protein. She is all about protecting your blood sugar. Mm. And so, but people are asking me more from a trim, healthy mama perspective. Mm. Like, Pearl, what do you think about these things she's saying? Well, do we, we have, need to do them? I think we have core values here. I haven't read yeah. any of her stuff, but well, I'm gonna both tell you of them. our systems... Yeah. Um, we care about blood sugar balancing. Okay, so these are her main hacks, and there's four of them. We're going to go through each one and say the good and the bad. So um, the first hack is always, always, always have a savory breakfast. Don't talk about that yet. We'll talk about it next. I didn't have coffee, so. Good. <laughs> good. The second one is have vinegar every day, one tablespoon. Wait, the- how do you? No, we don't. We don't discuss it yet until I've said them all, and then we go and discuss each one. Pastor Dandan. Pearl said no. <laughs> the next one is you always start your most of your meals if you can, but at least one meal a day with a veggie starter. You eat your veggies first, then you have your fiber and protein and fats, followed by if you want sugar. You're allowed to eat sugar, but it has to be at the end of your meal. The last one is move after eating, and we're going to talk about that because I jolly well love it. Okay, but let's go to the first okay, one. Back, back. Can you say them again? I need, We're going to do one at a time. Re- refired up. The first one is always, always have a savory breakfast. Now, let me see. I'm going to tell you what she's trying to do here. Then I'm going to tell you why I disagree with some of it. But Am some I of it to I love. Too? Yes, you are. After I, after, after I've, you. have you read the book? No. No. But I just read that. You I know. Told, you just, yeah, but, but, okay, so she wants people to have a savory breakfast because most people in this world, she believes, and probably are having like, Naked starches. They're having cornflakes or cereal, or they're having a donut or a pastry, oh, right? Yeah, like a toast. And she's getting thing. on so far away from that because she's like, "Stop it! Have a savory breakfast. Train yourself to not require that sweet in the morning, and have it paired with proteins and fats." So that's what she's well, getting people yeah. to do. Now, I have problems with it, but I, but it's also going to help some people. It's, it's a little. It's one of those things that's very broad. It's yeah. like a big paint stripe. You can go. Choo! Yeah. And you can help a bunch of people yeah. with just a broad paint stripe yeah. because, you know. That's it, what she is. She's broad. Yes. Yeah. It, it's not dialing in anything because no. when I was, can I just say this, yeah. when I did that kind of thing, I got stuck on savory yeah. breakfast for years. And what that stuck me on was S, 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 S. It was eggs and bacon. It was, you know, eggs, bacon and coffee. And for new peeps in the room, our S is a low carb meal. Yeah. It's the heavy on the, anchored with protein and more heavy on the fat. Yeah. Um, and so what happened was I did kind of get in a little bit of a metabolic rut because sometimes oatmeal is nice, savory, sometimes, mm, mm, you know, but, but it's, not as. it's not as, and I really feel like I've actually, my met- my metabolism has fired up since I started putting back fruit and oatmeal in the morning. Yeah. Of course I anchor it around protein. I well, well, well do. yes. And, and so here are the things and she so she is not against fruit, but that has to be your side. And she's not against a piece of bread. She doesn't, she likes rye, but she said, I don't even care if it's white, but it has to be the side part. Your main part is your protein and your fats. But then there's some things that contradict later on. But no, I agree with where you are, Serene. So a lot of people, when they come from a standard American diet and they are eating a junky breakfast or skipping breakfast altogether, Putting protein in your breakfast and some good fats, I mean, it, it helps. It stabilizes their blood sugar. And she's all about stabilizing people because mm-hmm. her blood sugar, like you used to be, Danny, was spiking and crashing. And, and that's why she felt so horrible. You know, when you wake up and you eat sugar, you're just ruined for the rest of the day. And that's what she's trying I, I to get like people away from. it's a stabilizing blood sugar plan and it's great for young. Yeah. But I feel like how could a person really um, lose a lot of weight to it? Like, because… Um, Steve Lamar. I know you can't pick it up no. right now, Bubby. Sorry, Steve. Um, Welcome back to the Trim Healthy <laughs> Podcast. So you were saying so because you know, say say we had a person, you know, do the savory breakfast. So they had their big eggs and bacon and coffee mm-hmm. with their cream, mm-hmm. and then they but they're hungry. They're, they they're hungry people. We know a lot of hungry people that are trying to lose weight. And then they think, well, I can have my piece of bread now on the side, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's white. So they have their big piece of white toast mm-hmm. on the side. And they've just had it after all of that. But their body's going to burn that toast first. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. It just is. See, that's what she doesn't so, understand. She's so, like, have it kind of on the side and it's not the main thing, but it doesn't matter. Your body goes and burns the carbs first because that's what it has to do. And then they're hungry people, so they think, oh, I'll have a little bit of um, cut orange too on the side. Yeah. That still is going to be burnt first. But in become, her defense, Serene, yeah. she's actually, she said she didn't design this for weight loss, although okay. it happens to people. It's, it's designed for Danny's. Yes. To stabilize their blood sugar it, and it would work. Yes. But all I'm saying is when women get to a certain age, be careful about cutting carbs out of breakfast. She says about oatmeal, she says, uh, let me read you what she says about oatmeal. Um, why are there no oats recipes? Because oats do not make a good savory breakfast. Unfortunately, they're mostly starch and create big blue glucose spikes. If you can't go without your oats, have them as a side for flavor along with a, a savory breakfast from the recipe. So here's what I want to say. If you're just going to have oats alone, that's not great. Okay. Oats yeah. are fantastic. But and they actually, there are slow grains. In- no, they don't rise. cause a they big don't. sharp rise. They're one of the slow grains. Have you now- seen any movies about ancient Scotland yeah. recently? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they liked the oats. And oats have been a staple for mil- you know, millennia and of, they of civilizations. Um, putting protein with oats, though, is far better. Yeah. And what we recommend. So putting our optimized plant protein and, um, I have to tell you, when I first started Trim Healthy Mama, I had my breakfast mostly like this. Mm-hmm. And and it was it was good for me. But then as my hormones started to decline, I couldn't do that. It mm. messed me up. Yeah, but, but I want to say, just because something works when you're younger doesn't mean it's the best, best, best either. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because I feel like I've trained my children at home, even though they're still, you know, most of them under 20, um, to, to have good energy in the morning mm-hmm. balance it around protein um if they want to have a fat because they're growing you know put all it in too but i feel like there's something about the cortisol being you know learning from that young like i know you can't teach cortisol but you know to get into the habit yes get in the habit of of having your body be blessed in the morning mm-hmm. and not because it does blunt cortisol even if you have your estrogen and you have your yeah. hormones and everything i feel like it does it does stabilize the body more when you give it the yes. energy because it's designed for energy. And there's nothing, you're, we're right, and there's nothing wrong to have some like what we would call S breakfast, just no, where, I, where yeah. some of them are just proteins and fats. And for some people, you know, they do well with them. But I'm at the point where I feel like people shouldn't do too many of them because like you're saying, Serene, we it is our preferred form glucose and our body with protein needs carbs well tell about that study pearl yeah i'm about to yeah yeah. well there's two different studies actually um one is called the second meal effect where people that had carbs and protein in the morning actually responded far better to the second meal and even the third meal of carbs so if you let's just say you you don't have a breakfast with carbs zero carbs and you're just doing keto or a trim healthy mama s and that's okay, okay occasionally you actually lose your sensitivity to insulin if you're going to have carbs in your next meal. It's fascinating. Carbs in your first meal help you with insulin sensitivity so for your next basically meal. basically help you stay sugar stable. Yes. Blood sugar stable. And yeah. Serena, it's a similar thing to what happens mm-hmm. when women who are kind of low carb do a um, test in their pregnancy yes. because they have not been mm-hmm. practicing burning carbs their body just they fail the test they don't get used to it it's like they're not very good at it anymore they haven't been practicing yes they become intolerant yeah they do for a while it's it's temporary but you become almost diabetic in a way yeah yeah and then there's another study um that followed women for eight weeks i think they were perimenopause a woman actually and um those that ate carbs in the morning and those that didn't, actually, their amount of carbs throughout the whole day, and they were only doing healthy carbs, like God carbs, not not the devil's ones. And that's a joke, guys, but, you know. Um, so then they tested their cortisol at the end of this eight-week period. And those who included their good carbs, their cortisol was beautiful. Those who didn't, they all of the women had elevated cortisol. Talk about me real quick, not trying to be narcissistic. But this is before perimenopause. This is premenopause. This yeah. is when I had good, the, the, the adequate hormones running through my body, was so I thought. But I had got stuck on a low-carb train. You know, I yeah. knew. We wrote the book. Yeah, we knew we, we loved carbs. We loved emails. And the mental uh, ascent to them was great. But You still had some, Serene. But yeah, I you, did. In the morning, no, you I woke did. up and had eggs and I, chocolate. I did. It was just like I did not deal, I, I did not treat them as, they were second class citizens. Yeah. Carbs were just just in the way I treated them, but mentally I was like, no, they're important. Well, 
um, a whole lifestyle of that, and I love to exercise and train, I actually got my uh, testosterone tested mm. young. Mm. My testosterone was tanked. It was 11. Mm. That is disgusting. Yeah, that's You know low. what happens? When your cortisol is always up and always uh, peaked and raging in your body, it will tank your – the more higher cortisol, the lower your it testosterone. Does. So I tanked my own testosterone. I remember feeling, why do I feel so like incapable in my workout? Yeah. Why am I putting so much effort and I'm not seeing as much results? I had I didn't have the natural testosterone in there yeah. and I had tanked it by doing this kind of thing in my youth. So I know yeah. you say we start to show it in mm-hmm. our peri and menopausal that we need the carbs and, you know, it, but I feel like it's very important in the youth. I have period. a question. Yeah, Dan. Um, carbs in the morning, is it like half and half protein carbs? Well, we just see And it, you need fat too because you're not trying to lose weight, right? We right. don't so. see it like half. What we see it like is, is, is a number in a way. Like we like to at least get 25 grams of protein, right? Mm-hmm. But in that 25 grams of protein has to be a, a quality kind of protein that has about three grams of lutein. Okay, so it. this is Serene. You know, we did that party and I heard yeah. back from that party where we started talking about three grams yeah. of lutein. You and I were talking about a protein. Yeah, so, so many women felt, yeah, we're nerdy about it. So many yeah. people, women felt overwhelmed. Okay, well, it's let's like, just say it. Like you, you. If it's you're like they're one like, egg, I, I'm just look. I'm look. I'm just trying to stay on plan, girls. Now you're telling me I need this math and this stuff. And you don't have to. Just no. start. <laughs> just baby step. But when you really want to care, yeah. Well, then it's there for you. It's there for you. That's what we're trying to say. Yeah, but no one has to be as nerdy. But if you're as us. having one egg in the morning, you are not getting the twenty five okay, grams of protein. Okay, well here's the problem. She's talking, uh, and, and listen. Some of her ones, I'm just going to agree with wholeheartedly and wish better feet. Yeah. But this is the one that I'm having issues with. Yeah. So she's talking about the need for protein in the morning yeah. and fat, she says. Yes. But then Agree some with of the her recipes, protein. I'm telling she's you, wake like, up. if you want to have a fruit, look at, she said, if you want to have a fruit, put some clothes on it. She said, you need protein. So one of her recipes is called an apple with some clothes on. This is the recipe. One apple, juice of quarter of 11, one and a half ounces of cheddar and a small handful of walnuts. That is not giving you enough protein. No. That's, that's your snack. That's so no. You, that's your breakfast. Oh my goodness! Because even if it even okay, breakfast you need the bowl as a protein. Even in a snack, I'm thinking I haven't had protein for three hours. I need to get a so full bowl so. Of- but she's doing a broad stroke. She is helping people. Yeah, she because is because at least because they could have had. Yeah, you know, they could have had cornflakes, and instead they're having a very healthy apple. They're having some protein in the walnuts, a little bit, and a little bit of protein in the cheese. Yeah. They're not near 20 grams, but it's so much better. Right. And I think that's what but she's she trying has, to do is right. better rather than dial in every little micro right. thing. Right. But see, we have to we have to contend now. Yeah. Like, I think you should. That's not going to hold our muscle there. That might mm-hmm. hold a 31-year-old's muscle. I don't maybe. think so. Phil, these days, you, you, you're They'll hold Mike's to- muscle. Mike, yeah. how old are you, 20? 19. Yeah, but Mike, if you look, you showed Mike that breakfast, he'd like spit. He'd be like, where's my eggs? Where's my whey shake? In fact, Mike just spit. <laughs> but so I'm, I'm still trying to be nice because I'm telling you she's bringing some good stuff. She here. is a good person. No, she, is. No, she is. She's actually super smart. She's yes, a young woman no, doing a good, lot and of And I like good. number two and actually do that. Oh, okay. So we Let's t- have her on the podcast. So number two. Yeah, and I'm sure she would. Say I mean, it to her face. I no, would. I really That's what I mean. I would because done. you're you're being kind. I feel like she's doing so much good. She's doing good. Yeah. So many people are coming to her because she's easy and broad, and they're making these small changes, and they're doing a lot of yeah. Help, it's a, help. like good little tricks, like yeah, make they, it that's savory. That's what she says. She said, "I've just got hacks for you. Yeah. If you do these, you're going to improve your health." Yeah. Okay. We um the the second thing is have vinegar once a day yes. at least a tablespoon. How do you do that? Well, I, I make all my dressings with apple cider, raw apple cider. Have you vinegar. ever heard okay. of a drink called Good Girl Moonshine? Yeah, um, Denny. I have heard of it. <laughs> I made That's some what good... we kind of took when we first started Trim Healthy mm-hmm. Mamas Ring created this drink with vinegar. Why? Why is she talking about vinegar? Your blood sugar. And why have we always been crazy about vinegar? Because as Serene said. It stops spikes. Mm -hmm. So we need blood sugar, but we don't want it to spike. Here's what it also did. Studies have shown that one tablespoon of vinegar can reduce the glucose spikes of a meal by up to 30% and the insulin spike by 20%. With that, cravings are curved. That's why we did Good Girl Moonshine because it curbs your cravings. And it's not just the vinegar. Vinegar is great. It's like anything sour fermented. So that's why 
also kefir. Mm -hmm. um, vinegar is acetic acid. Keter, kefir is lactic acid. Mm -hmm. They both do the same thing. And that's why we promote sourdough bread. Why? The sour. It's, it's releasing less insulin in your body. Less blood sugar spikes. The souring is burning more fat. And that's why back in the good old days, they had less good old guts because… They didn't have refrigeration. Every, a lot of their condiments were fermented. Yes. They, their dairy was sour. They didn't have mm -hmm. fridge to stick their gallons of milk in. They put it in goat's skins and curdled mm -hmm. it, you know? And that's why cultured veggies like sauerkraut, sauerkraut, you know, they're so good for us because they are causing our blood sugar to remain stable less insulin in our bodies and with less insulin well high we five to jesse on that one yeah. number two totally no high complaints. five totally yeah. high five her that's great Sour, and she's, like store-bought sauerkraut no no um, you you want to you can do store-bought but buy it from the refrigerated section if yeah. you're going to go to so live. say live raw she also yeah. okay. says that um you can either do that tablespoon and i and i'm more than that i have yeah. more than that per Me day too. with all my sour foods yeah. but she said you can do it in your dressing or drink it beforehand yeah. or whatever. Right. But I love that. It's just I easy. Love it. Okay, so then uh, the third one is your veggie starter. And here's where I think it's fantastic and here's where I don't agree too. But overall, I like it. I think it's great for the for the average American. Yes, because yes. why? Here's why I like it. You're getting <laughs> yeah. more veggies in. She's yes. making you eat them before your and meal yes. and that makes you eat them. Yeah, because if you wait till after, you'll yeah. fill up and you uh, won't yeah. eat them. Eat them while you're hungry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I find that's the easiest way to get like veggies down mm -hmm. is like be hungry and then do that yeah yeah because dan you're an average american i'm average i'm an aa yeah so adding a vegetable based dish to the beginning of your lunch or dinner is hack three why she says because vegetables contain a powerful component called fiber when eaten at the beginning of a meal she believes fiber significantly reduces the glucose spikes of any food that follows um veg and then she goes on to say you want this veggie starter to compromise comprise about 30% of your meal. Now, here's what she's doing. She's smart. Yeah. She's getting people to eat it before their meal because usually they wouldn't only eat it. If they're coming over a standard American diet, they're just not eating it, they're right? Not. But if you get them to eat it before your meal, it's tricking your brain and then it's taking up 30% of that whole meal. So the other 30% of what it would normally be, like the fries or the burger or the something, yeah. is not there. Instead, there's a vegetable win-win. Yeah, exactly. But do you have to eat a veggie before a meal for trim healthy mamas? You well, don't have to eat it before a meal. And and the thing is, for me, there's different types of body types, yeah. you know. So I don't want to sidetrack with my body type um, because most people coming to trim healthy mama want to yeah. lose weight. I'm a trainer. Like I like to do athletic stuff. Mm. And the fact, not a trainer, I don't train people, but I just you train, train your own style. Train my own body. And so I found that I was just like, thinking, oh, I'm so healthy because I don't eat the rice. I eat the cauliflower rice. I eat more yeah. of the vegetables. And look at how many vegetables are on my plate. What I didn't realize is I didn't have a lot of fuel on my yeah. plate. And so we know who you are. Yes. And if you're a person… Well, you needed to gain weight. Right. So you had to take some of that less dense food right. and high water content food with the veggies yeah. and actually replace it with dense food. Well, like get some brown rice on your plate, Serene. Right. Stop with the cauliflower. But rice. even if somebody is trying to lose yeah. weight and they do train and they do exercise, make sure it's just not all a bunch yeah. of bulk non-starchy mm -hmm. because that's going to tank yeah. you know, your metabolism because you're, you're going to have low energy availability and your body's going to freak out and yes. stress and get the cortisol. But for most people, Serene, yeah. they need more vegetables. I agree. They 100%. really do. And Serene, yeah. Your diet is full of veggies. Oh, full of veggies. So, yeah. so for this, for most people, I think it's a good thing. But for Trim Healthy Mamas, you know, they ask me, Pearl, should I be eating my veggie at the beginning of my meal? For me, if that helps you. But if that brings a whole bunch of rigid restrictions and you can't just ha have a beautiful salad with your protein at the same time, yeah. Um, no, yeah. you don't have to follow that. But like Dan… Like if you want to get your veggies in, you go eat them before a meal and half spinach before a meal. That great. And I'm going to eat them after like a big boy though. Yeah. And what about okay. this? And I'm what about this too? Veggies. What about yeah. these people that 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 get full quick and they get so full on veggies that they can't even finish their proper protein? Well, you um, know what I'm saying. I yeah. get full quick. We have, you know, we yeah. have, we know people that are so bird rabbit fooders, yeah, and they don't eat enough protein because they so yeah. Fill so, up on so, their so that would be a problem if you're not eating your protein because you're eating more yeah. veggies. You got to eat your protein. Yeah. So for that reason, I'd say eat it together. That's what I'm saying. But for a lot of people, I think this is going to be a help. Yeah. Don't you? Oh, yeah. I think it's great. I'm basically yeah. just eating meat and vegetables now. Oh, well, what Where's happened your to your carbs? Where's your grain your carbs? Uh, potatoes. Potatoes? Oh, okay. oh, good. potatatoes? are good. Yeah. Or rice. And what about, no, and what about good fruit and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Good yeah, that's, well, I he mean, is then. <laughs> yeah. 
just what? say something, but it's not the truth. You're like, I'm basically eating meat and vegetables now. And we're like, what about potatoes? You're like, yeah. That's a vegetable. What about rice? Yes, but it's all okay. So she's it's also talking. What she's trying to say here, the veggie starter, she's talking non starchy. What's yes. rice? Is it the a vegetable? The veggie starter, she means like celery, cabbage, broccoli. broccoli well, that's you know, vegetables. Yeah, non starchy veggies. You were, you were coupling both starchy and non-starchy veggies together, which is fine because you're right. They're all veggies. I'm an average American. <laughs> what, she what might is have rice? had to be clearer then because the Dannys are just going to put a bunch okay. of white potatoes and eat 30% of their plate of them. Is rice oh. a bean? No, rice, rice is, is a, a plant grain. food, but it yeah. is a plant food. It's a vegetable food. then. It's a grain. Yeah, it's a oh, grain, grain, but it's, it's a plant category. food, but a grain. Yeah. Rice. Oh. Now, uh, white rice is different than <laughs> black rice. <laughs> Can we say that in 2023? Can we acknowledge <laughs> the differences? Yeah, it's different. I have some black, the black rice. black rice is way better for you. Oh, I love I black rice. I have black rice, rice in Isn't my it fridge. Good? It's, it's so delicious. good. I love it. Black rice is like a hearty meal. Oh, oh yeah. It's like I could be tempted to just eat you could, that for a meal. You could, but you need to put a little bit of chicken or something. Throw, but it has got more protein. But yeah, yeah, I'll throw butter and salt on black rice. Put some mm-hmm. chicken in there. I mean, yeah. For what's your the, muscles, Danny. For okay, we up to the fourth hack. Yeah, we're up to the fourth hack, and I love it. Oh, I love Move it. after eating, and this is such a simple. What's the name again? Hack. We are high fiving you. Well, are we going to get a cramp? We're not supposed to swim after after we okay, eat. Okay, okay. Last but certainly not least, she does. She says. It's the constitutional kind of moving, not the training. I'm it's down. time to wake up your muscles to their newfound role. The more and the harder a muscle contracts, the more energy it needs. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And then we go um, into, um, oh, she says, answers to all your questions. She goes into it somewhere why you, why, I'll go to page 216, why you eat after you Well, uh, Pearl. Why you move after you meant, yeah, Pearl, while you you're going to page you 216, we need to take a commercial break. Okay. So uh, here we are, and she's on page 220 of her book, Glucose Goddess Method. And I actually recommend the book. There's some nice recipes in there and stuff. So um, They don't have enough protein, Pearl. Some of them don't. Some of them do, Serena. Yeah. I was just pointing out one that didn't. Okay. But she's not a numbers person. Like, she's mm. broad stroke. Just get some protein. Right. Kind of like what we used to be. Ask yourself the question, where's your protein? And that's a great baby step. Yeah. Some protein is way better than no protein. Right. Yeah. So, um. But I wouldn't she consider cheese says, and nuts protein. No. I consider them all fats because you'd have to have so much of it to get protein. Okay. Imag- so she's going on. I'm trying to pick the best stuff to read here. Imagine, for example, you've just eaten a meal that leads to a glucose spike. As soon as this influx of glucose hits your body, two things can happen. If you stay sedentary as the spike reaches its peak, extra glucose will flood your cells and overwhelm your mitochondria. This increases inflammation and causes the excess glucose to be stored away in the liver muscles and fat. On the other hand, if you move after eating, some of the glucose you have just gets used up by your muscle cells. Your mitochondria turns the extra glucose into energy to fuel for your contracting muscles. So what she's saying is many cultures do this, and she talks about it. Mm -hmm. After their meal, instead of just sitting, Mm -hmm. they get up, they go for a stroll around the little town square. You know, the constitutional walk when we're on vacay together. Remember with That's right, whenever we're on vacay. Now, I don't always do this at night, but I kind of like to do it in the day if I can. I love to, I I mean, it's kind of dark by the time I'm eating, so I can't go outside Mm -hmm. for a walk. Mm -hmm. But she says, even if you get up and do the dishes afterwards, within that 60-minute window, move. Don't just sit there with the food in your belly Mm -hmm. because it's really important with the way your blood sugar is going to roll in your body. Mm -hmm. Movement gets it being used. Sitting just lets it sit there. Right. So So I kind of really And now we're not talking about post-exercise protein meals here. We're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about having to do your shake before you work out here. We're just clarifying because you never know. Yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Well, it's just as always eat before you move. I'm just trying to say oh, just because we're talking about course. movement, we're not talking here because no. you want that to sit and flood your muscles. Yes, you don't yes. want to burn that off. You've just burnt and your, your muscles are Your protein post, post-workout. Yes. No, that's different. We're not talking about no, that. We're just talking just about talking every other meal. A, a regular meal. And mm-hmm. she says you don't have to do this after every meal, but she'd like people to do it after one meal a day if they can. Brilliant. And she And she makes it very simple. Like, hey, just doing dishes or just cleaning up your house. You're moving. You're not sitting Jessie, there. We're high-fiving you. High-five. Um, no, I want to give you a, a not so much high five, Jesse, but I can understand why you're saying this. Okay, so this is where I disagree with her. Jesse says it's okay to eat sugar, and she says 
And she says to people, hey, I eat sugar every single day. But here's why I want to say to our trim healthy mamas, and she's like, long as you eat it at the end of your meal, do my hacks first, you'll be okay. But here's what I want to say. You're 31, Mm Jessie. And you're already trim, you're already thin, you move a lot, and you're from jolly France. I mean, it's in the genetics to to be able to have the wine and the chocolate. The French eats a little chocolate. But I'm going to tell you, I went to Italy and I couldn't understand why everyone's thin. Everyone was thin in Italy because they walk. No, they like were just, skinny. They were sk- they were too skinny, actually. Yeah, it wasn't good. And they're, and they're having their little sugar here and there. These are my people now. Right. All right. And I love the culture. But it's little. You live in America. Sugar is big here. You can't say to someone, you eat sugar every day. It's fine. I do it. You'll be fine. That's a different culture. Yeah, just talk about it. When when you'd see them for breakfast, right? Yeah, they would they, walk miles to the cafe. Yeah. They wouldn't even sit down. They'd stand, they stand up and they shoot their bars. espresso. They had their little pastry things were so little over there. Oh my goodness, it's like a bite. Cute little pastry. Yeah, and we were like, where's my food? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the and French, then they would move off to work. The French that do the that. same thing. They the had French the have a lot of butter, they have their bread, they drink their wine, they have their chocolate. But it's not in huge amounts and it's a different culture and it's not American sized. If you tell them at night time, remember yeah. the meals, they would always bring the antipasta, the yeah. salad, the everything first. The the noodles, which were so al dente, they, they would hardly start to And they were the huge portions. They were at the end of everything. <laughs> they were very small portions. It's different. It's I really like, interesting because yeah. uh, e- even Italians over here can tend to swell. Yeah, because it's a different kind of American Italian food eating approach. Yeah, it's, it's very different to Italy. You've been there, right, Leslie? It's like they were walking everywhere and they eat there and. They, they're little bits of food, but they make it last so long and they're really enjoying it. They have several courses, but it's fresh. But that's so interesting how as a, like a country, they've not descended into like more and more sugar and bigger portions and more sugar. And no, they haven't. How have they avoided that? I don't know. We I don't think know. they've really kept the culture of their fresh food and the love that goes into making something well, because they've Because love, they love their Roma tomatoes too yeah. and they love their orchard fruit. And they're mm. so... They're so they, veggie infused. So, I wonder they, if so it, they just don't like say, I'm only going to love sugar. I wonder if it follows like their economy or work practices. Like, do they, do they work the same way we work? You know, do they clock in at jobs like we clock in? Is it... Mm. Yeah, and they have it. Yeah, so oh, they, they've got a nap built. So they in. don't need a sugar snack. And you know what? They have less stress and cortisol because they're. they're all, so I wonder if they're as like, gotta grind and be productive. It's it's not the same because there's a certain type of eating that goes along yes, with an it approach is. to work and because and we're all so stressed and we're pushing through, we need the sugar. You know, so many Americans like I got to get my sugar hit and I got to eat my anxiety and I need my huge bowl of ice cream. And it's because of a, of lifestyle. It's a different lifestyle over there. I've got to, but I've got to find you. I'm going to go. find you a really good example. That's my first goal for like overseas, like or destination I want to go to overseas. Mm. Where Italy or France? It, what well, Italy and Italy is, is Spain close? Sam and yeah. I are going to go to Greece. We decided for oh, our anniversary. We were going to go to Greece and then COVID our hit. Twenty sixth anniversary. Oh, you got really? to. Really? When we're is gonna it? Go. Well, we, we have went. Hyatt points. Oh, and yeah. There's a whole nice Hyatt there in Greece. Oh, you got to. I want to show you a picture. Those watching, those listening, oh, well, you better watch next time. I want to show you one of her recipes that to me is so Mediterranean. We're going to lose ad revenue. Is that, is that arugula? Because I love arugula. Yes. And, and this it's avocado. Is a and lot it's of sardines. Arugula. It's very Mediterranean. Yeah. Well, that looks very Look nice. Look at that. This is a breakfast. Those are sardines? Yes. Yeah, but that's not enough protein. I've never had a sardine. Are well, they good? hold on. But no, look. it's not enough. I just want to show you. One can of sardines. I just wanna, this like is proving grams. my point. So those of you who can't see. Yeah, but it's pretty good, Serene. 18 grams. Okay, Mikey, so don't be too nerdy. On. You're putting people off. Okay, nerdy, not good <laughs> enough for you, good enough for most people. You wouldn't do just 18, not now in your stage. Okay, but I'm more nerdy these days. Okay, thank you. But we are all got nerd. baby step. But, but I want to show you. I want this is proving my point that she's saying I eat sugar every day and I'm fine and then she puts recipes in the book and this one is it's got half an avocado juice of a quarter of a lemon one 4.2 ounce can of sardines and olive oil a small handful of arugula and one tablespoon of chili oil now to me it looks delicious mm, right me too but this person who is creating that recipe is not chowing down on bowls of huge American ice cream. No. She is not a driving through for a frosty after she's all done the other things. She is not eating five Toll House cookies after her dinner. 
this is a different culture person yes. that creates that beautiful recipe right there. So I feel, Jesse, you're helping so many people, but American culture is a bit different. Right. So, so to so say, to, you got You can eat sugar every day. I do is fine. Just know who you're speaking to. That's all I want to say. Yes. That's so I, I want to say or ask, how do sardines taste? I love sardines. They're delicious. Do they taste like fish? Do you know they don't have to? Do you know how I really love sardines? I Africanized my sweet potatoes because okay. my African children, they really loved sardines. They yeah. came loving sardines. And I, I knew how healthy they were, but I never kind of got into them because they kind of ooked me out. They were like mm. a bit too They're very, much. They smell strong. Well, they well, have a tail. Well, <laughs> they do. <laughs> you take your sardines, you drain the olive oil off, right? Okay. So healthy. And you smash them into your sweet potato. Oh. And you put Ooh. curry and you Yum. put cumin and you put apple cider vinegar and you make it tangy. and And you make it... Um, earthy and it's spicy it's a little like hot too i'm telling you it's delicious. but it, is it uh do you eat the tail you don't know there's a tail there's no tail there's well no her tail. ones she had, well, it's she had like a tail some shrimp you know you oh, eat yeah. the tail. those ones were yeah, tail a but bit of a most tail. of them don't have tail yeah. but uh shrimp, is yeah. when when you bite into the fish yeah. I almost feel like looking at it on that plate, it's raw somehow. No. But these are no, cooked oh, fish. This is cooked. cooked, I think. It's beautiful. It's it's cooked. Something. And no, on the gorgeous. inside, it looks like a white cooked fish. No. What no, does it it's look not like? white. It's kind of gray. I feel like, have you ever seen that 80s uh, Batman no, movie with gray. the penguin? It's kind of, but it's not white. Yeah. Remember he bit into the fish and it was just like. You have to try was, sardines for yourself. They're mm. really good. I love them. I can do a pack a day. Oh, this looks yummy. Avocado accident. That's yummy. It's got tuna and hummus and avocado. I mean, it's an S meal. I like yes. the name. So I would say you could use some of her recipes, but make sure to include your E carbs in the morning Thank too. You. Yes, yes. Um, but you know, I don't want to read all her recipes because that would start being copyright. But this is a <laughs> breakfast salad one. But I'm seeing, oh, so the protein she has, it's basically a salad for breakfast. Is it just feta or is that tuna? No, it's just feta and pumpkin seeds. What's this red stuff here? That's pepper. No, radishes. Radishes. Oh, that's just not enough. No, so it's so, a salad for breakfast with right. no protein. So there are some that do not have enough protein, but then she's got egg cups. She's got chickpea stew. But the chickpea um, stew, what kind of meat she's got in there? Because the chickpeas aren't enough. Well, she doesn't have any meat, but nope. she's got three quarters of a cup, three quarters of a can. No, no, she's got half a can of chickpeas. Sorry, which, that's not enough. No, it's definitely not enough for protein nerds, but it's better than cornflakes. Let's go to France. Conflict. Let's let's end the episode with flying to France. So what would I I would like to say is um much stuff, much treasured gems in here. Yes. Um yeah. that's what I want to say. Do some and of she's the got hacks. this bow tie pasta in the corner so that people pick up the plate and say, I don't need to stay away from that. That's Bro, fantastic. you just jerked the book but, back but, like, but a, she's, like a fussy sister. She's thinking about it in the French way, you see, of this. This past she even sister, looks French. Yeah, little and sister look tried to take your toy. Look at the cho- she's saying you can have the chocolate chip. You jerk. But it who back. has one chocolate chip cookie, people? Yeah. Let little brother see. Let, Let little me see. brother see. Let me see, Jesse. But anyway, that is my. If you want to know, you really want to like know we my nice Jesse. I feel like she is a beautiful, smart girl. Yeah, she is beautiful, and she has taken control of her blood sugar. Yeah. And she's got some fantastic tips and tricks, and they're broad strokes that are going to help people. But if you want to dial in, there's like, more to be dialed in. But she's even saying, she's admitting it. Yes. She's saying, I'm not dialing things in for you. I'm just giving you tips. But if you are uh-huh. at all concerned with muscle at yeah. all, which you very much should be, there needs to be more protein in that book. For okay. sure. But, uh, but yeah, there we go. I love that wrap up, Serene. And uh, we'll see you guys here. In, I'm looking in the camera, Danny. I'm doing it. Please don't. I'm just saying. I'm we'll going to lose all my value. <laughs> Turn off your mama my way And then I'll be